all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees please leave the main floor of the chambers? There is additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. You good? Yep. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of November 28th, 2018. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumble. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Borelli. Brannan. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. <laughs> Deutsch. Yeah. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Present. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Rudenchik. Here. Holden. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Barron. Levin. Levine. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Here. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vallone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Lander. Here. Williams. Here. Borelli. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you for that. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Robert Waterman of Antioch Baptist Church, located at 826 Green Avenue in Brooklyn. All rise. As we bow our heads, O oh, eternal and everlasting Father in heaven, some call you a supreme being God. Others call you Elohim, Allah. It is our request that you would bless this event 
And we desire that your divine presence would be here with us this afternoon. Among other things, O oh God, you are the creator of the human mind, which you modeled in some fashion after your own great mind. Though we acknowledge that our thoughts are infinitely higher, or your thoughts are infinitely higher and more profound than ours, we glory in the notion that we may, on our own level, think some of your thoughts after you in this place. Thank you for the precious gift of knowledge and discovery. May our efforts be blessed with insight, guided by understanding, and grant us wisdom. We seek to serve with res respect of all. May our personal faith give us strength and act honestly and well in all matters before us. Bless us today with a chance to grow, with friendships and a sense of community, with work to do. Let us be a positive influence to those we meet. May we act with integrity and truth to all things. Give us the very best of ourselves and all that we do in living to appreciate the gift today. I ask on behalf of those that are gathered here that you would bless us indeed. Give us grace and make a difference for all that we do, wherever we may find ourselves in years ahead. And now may you please, with what is done this afternoon, thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, according to my faith, amen. Amen. We are so pleased to have Dr. Reverend Robert Waterman, who is a graduate from Drew University, where he obtained his doctorate degree from New York Theological Seminary, Master of Divinity, bachelor degree from Hunter College, political science degree, and associate degree from Hostos Community College of the City of New York. He is a lifetime member of the NAACP and Kappa Alpha Phi Psi fraternity. Dr. Robert Waterman has served as assistant to the Vice President and Dean of Student Affairs here at Medgar Evers College in my district and conduct officer for three years. He has served in the Department of Education for six years in District 16. He pastors Antioch Baptist Church, located in the Bedford-Stuyvesant area for 17 years, which is headed by Council Member Robert Cornegie. He worked in the engineering field for over 20 years before going into education. Dr. Waterman is actively engaged in the fight against issues such as HIV and AIDS, poor education, poverty, lack of jobs, and limited health care. He serves as the president of the AACEO African American Clergy and elected officials organization of Brooklyn for the last eight years. And I just want to say that we are so very proud to have you here as we in the New York City Council have kicked off World AIDS Day here early, which will begin on December 1st. And we want to thank you, Reverend Waterman, for your leadership in keeping this critical issue in the forefront and recognizing that the epidemic is not over, particularly as it is continuing to ravish African American and Latino communities, and more specifically, African American women. And we are pleased today to also have uh, within our midst several individuals from the clergy as part of the City Council's faith-based initiative that utilizes our faith-based initiatives to provide support and help for those in need who are impacted by HIV and AIDS in our community. I want to recognize we have Reverend Cheryl Anthony, Reverend Gwen Dingle, Bishop Stacy Latimer, Reverend Alonzo Jordan, Bishop Ishmael Claudio, as well as Dee Bailey of Watchful Eye, as well as Jessica Bailey. So we are pleased to have you here as we continue to raise our voice surrounding issues of HIV and AIDS throughout the city of New York. It is my honor and it is my pleasure to spread today's invocation, and we thank you so much for your leadership and for being a voice, and not just a voice, but a powerful voice, a meaningful voice, and a passionate voice throughout New York City. Thank you for recognizing this epidemic in the city of New York. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Majority Leader. Yes, Speaker Corey Johnson. I also want to uh, thank. Shh. Quiet in the chambers. If folks could please take a seat. 
I really want to thank the Reverend Dr. Waterman for being here today. You said it, Madam Majority Leader, but I think it's important to say to have someone of his prominence that has shown his level of leadership, not just in the borough of Brooklyn, but throughout the entire city on many issues, but it is special and important to have him here in advance of World AIDS Day. The leadership that he has shown on this issue, not just this year, last year, but for many years. The leadership that he has shown as a member of the clergy, how he has been vocal, and how he has been open in talking about the need to have this conversation within congregations across our city is important. And that leadership has saved lives. That leadership has made it so people have not gotten infected because of the ability to have that conversation in an open and honest way. I stood with him and Dee Bailey when Watchful Eye and the organization that he leads of clergy members had an event earlier this year uh, celebrating that special week. And I just am sincerely grateful for the work that he has done on this issue, especially as an openly HIV positive man. So I know you already, of course, Madam Majority Leader, made a motion to spread the invocation full and upon the record. I second that motion, and I want to thank the Reverend and Dr. Waterman for being here today. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. <clears throat> we will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Vallone. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, colleagues. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of October 7, 2018 be adopted and printed. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we will have messages and papers from the mayor. Pre-considered M117, submitting Margaret Garnett for appointment to the Department of Investigation. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from the speaker. Good afternoon. It's good to see you up there, Madam Majority Leader. Good to be seen. Thank you all for being here this Wednesday. I hope everyone had a beautiful Thanksgiving with their family and friends and loved ones. We have a busy agenda ahead of us today. Before we begin, it's sad to do this every stated meeting. I want to remember some of those that we've lost since the last stated meeting. And first, I want to remember four 9-11 first responders who have died mm. in the last few weeks from illnesses related to their service down at Ground Zero. I can say this every time. We can't thank these heroes enough for their sacrifice. And I want to take this time to extend my deepest condolences to the families of firefighters Philip Catrocci and Anthony Palazzola, as well as EMTs Joy Rodriguez and Martha Stewart. These four heroes have passed from 9-11 related diseases in the last two weeks, just before the holidays, in service of what they did for our city. I also want to extend my condolences to the family of Roy Kim, another yellow cab driver who took his own life in desperation. Mr. Kim is the eighth driver to take his life this year. This is a serious problem, and the council is committed to helping drivers deal with changes in the industry so that they can make ends meet and support themselves and their families. Finally, before we give a moment of silence for these heroes, I want to take a moment to recognize World AIDS Day, which is coming up this Saturday. Since the start of the AIDS crisis, <clears throat> more than 675,000 Americans have died from AIDS. Mm. 675,000 individuals. That is bigger than the population of Wyoming or Vermont. These individuals are brothers and sisters, sons, mothers, children, friends, co-workers, neighbors. It is such a loss, and it is hard to actually wrap your head around a loss that significant. Having lived with HIV for the last 14 years, I know the fear, the anxiety, and the stress that living with this disease can bring. 
But when I was diagnosed, there were options for treatment that many people did not have before me. I can't imagine what those who died at the height of this epidemic went through, but I know that there are many, many people in this room who lost friends and family members and loved ones and who witnessed that epidemic in a way that I didn't have to. I never had to worry about losing my job because of my diagnosis. And when I told my family, they told me they loved me, unlike so many people who were cast out because of fear and discrimination and prejudice. On World AIDS Day, we collectively remember those we lost and we mourn for what might have been. We hold these 675,000 people in our hearts. We will remember them, we will remember their struggle, and we will pledge that under our watch, we won't let this happen again. We will fight in their name for those still living with this disease. I say it, and I think it's important to say over and over again. In 1991, and I know that uh, Danny and Jimmy were actually involved in this. In 1991, I was nine years old, and Tom Duane ran for the New York City Council at the height of the AIDS epidemic. People were dying every single day in New York City. And Tom didn't win that election, but he came out about his HIV status before there were any drugs to treat people who were living with HIV and AIDS. He did it in a moment of fear and anxiety and discrimination and grief and loss in our city where there was not much hope. And he did it with his head held high. And after he lost, he came back and he ran two years later and he won a seat on the New York City Council. And he became the first openly gay, openly HIV positive member of this body. Now Tom is but one example of the bravery that we saw during the epidemic in the dark years when people were dying every single day. But I would not be standing here today, I would not even be in this body, never mind being speaker, if it were not for people like Tom Duane and Larry Kramer and Ann Northrup and Sylvia Rivera and Audrey Lord and Michael Callan and Marsha P. Johnson, and the list goes on. The men and women, the activists who put their lives and body on the line, who blocked traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge, who shut down the New York Stock Exchange, to get access to life-saving drugs for their friends and family members who were dying and for themselves when they thought they were gonna die. Yesterday I visited Hart Island, north of Rikers Island, where the East River and Long Island Sound meet. And on the very southern tip of Hart Island is an area marked by white headstones where tens of thousands of individuals in the 1980s and 1990s were buried in mass graves because many individuals, many businesses in this city would not provide funerals for people who died of HIV and AIDS. And their family members, many of them, did not want to claim their bodies. And so they were sent to a potter's field in the East River, buried in 30 foot deep mass graves. I am alive today because of those people. I was able to run for city council because of those people. I was able to be elected speaker because of the wonderful members of this body, but on the shoulders of those individuals. And so you said it earlier, Madam Majority Leader, when we stood with Dee Bailey and the folks from Watchful Eye, but it's important to say not just about HIV and AIDS, but on many issues, you are only as sick as your secrets. Mm -hmm. And I do not want to be sick. 
I want to be a person of healthy mind, body, and soul. And so I stand here today to honor the lives of the people who came before me and us, who blazed the trail and the path for me to be able to run for city council. I do this work in their name, with their honor, and I do it remembering that there are still people in New York City that are suffering. This disease is no longer a disease, by and large, of sexual orientation. It's a disease of poverty, and it's a disease that is centered in communities of color across New York City. This council has come up in the last five years with $6.9 million to end the epidemic. And two years ago, our health department recorded the lowest level of new infections ever recorded in the history of the epidemic. So I stand here today proud of this body. I stand here today and I want to thank all of you, each and every one of you, for your leadership and the work that you do for wearing this red ribbon, not just as a mere gesture, but to really remember the lives of those that have been lost. I am exceedingly grateful to have benefited from their leadership, from their activism, and from their advocacy. Lastly, I want to recognize and say I know a lot of people here are grieving over the loss of our colleague, mm -hmm. State Senator Jose Peralta, who died unexpectedly just before Thanksgiving with a wife and two sons, someone who was a history maker, being the first Dominican elected to the New York State Assembly and then to the Senate. And I am so sorry for his sudden passing. And we hold his family and his loved ones in our hearts during this holiday season. He is a man who stood up for immigrants, who stood with the LGBT community, and who loved the neighborhoods that elected him and the city that he served so ably. And so with that, I'd ask for everyone to please rise and take a moment of silence for all of those that we've lost this year and in years past. Thank you. Uh, now we are going to dive into our docket for the day. The council will vote on one Article 11 property tax exemption located in Council Member Diana Ayala's district, which will preserve 53 units of affordable housing located on East, 160, East 116th Street. The council will vote on the following land use items as well. Park in Elton, it's for 37 affordable housing units in land use chair Rafael Salamanca's district. MEC 125th Street, another Article 11 uh, tax exemption uh, in Council Member Diana Ayala's district, 550 Madison Avenue, a landmark designation of the former AT&T corporate headquarters in Council Member Keith Powers' district. I want to thank the staff who worked on these items, Jeff Yoon and Emma Wong. We're going to vote on the following pieces of legislation today. First, we'll vote on Introduction 480A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, which would require the Department of Youth and Community Development to establish a plan to provide information about resources and services related to immigration relief and benefits for runaway and homeless youth and programs operated by DYCD. I want to thank Paul Senegal, Andrea Vasquez, and Smita Deshmukh from the staff for their work on this important piece of legislation. We'll also vote an introduction 1069, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Levine, that would require the Taxi and Limousine Commission or another agency or office designated by the mayor to study the problem of medallion owner debt. Councilmember Levine and Councilmember Gibson are not with us today because they are in Cleveland at the National Right to Council Conference. 
but I want to congratulate Councilmember Levine on this and thank the staff who worked on this, uh, James DiGiovanni, uh, Nell Beekman, Tirza Nasser, and Laura Popa. Next, we'll vote on two pieces of legislation creating sus special suspensions of al alternate side of the street parking. Introduction 497, sponsored by Councilor Peter Koo, would amend the administrative code of the City of New York in relation to suspending alternate side street parking regulations on Lunar New Year's Eve. And introduction 370, sponsored by Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, would amend the administrative code in relation to suspending alternate side of the street parking regulations on Three Kings Day. I want to thank the staff, James DiGiovanni, Rick Arbello, and Emily Rooney from the Transportation Committee for their work on these two pieces of legislation. The Council will vote on a package of legislation introduced by Councilmember Joe Borelli, the chair of our Fire and Emergency Services Committee. Uh, this is going to be in relation to the operations and reporting of the FDNY. Introduction 1054 will require the Fire Department uh, to make all components of applications for fire alarm plan examinations and inspections to be available for online submission. Introduction 744 would require the fire department to report to the city council on staffing ratios of FDNY emergency medical services, supervising officers to FDNY EMS stations. And finally, introduction 746 would require the FDNY to annually report to the city council on potential impacts to fire protection and emergency medical services that resulted from rezonings that took place in the previous year. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package of bills, Rachel Cordero, Rob Calandra, Josh Kingsley, and Will uh, Hongach. We will also vote on two pieces of legislation I introduced to demonstrate our collective opposition to President Trump's proposed change to the public charge rule, resolution 608 would grant the Speaker of the City Council the authority to submit a comment on behalf of the City Council in opposition to the pro's public charge rule, and resolution 609 urges the federal government not to move forward with the rule's adoption. I urge everyone to submit a comment on this rule's change. We are a city of nation and of immigrants, and I truly believe that this proposal is unfair to our immigrant friends and neighbors. We have until December 10th to have our voices heard, and I hope that as many people as possible will let the Trump administration know how much harm this would do. I want to thank the chair of our immigration committee, Carlos Menchaca, who held a hearing on this and who has done an incredible job bringing this issue to light, talking to communities all across the city, and being one of the foremost activists, allies, and advocates for immigrants, not just in the city, but across the country. Carlos has been phenomenal, so I want to thank him for his leadership, and I also want to thank the staff who worked on this. Rob Newman, Laura Popa, Andrea Vasquez, Brian Crow, Harbani Ahuja, uh, Tanya Cyrus, and Elizabeth Kronk. Finally, the Council will vote on a package of legislation aimed at protecting the voting rights of the formerly incarcerated. In, uh, introduction th 367, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Salamanca, would require the Department of Probation to distribute written notices of voting rights while uh, folks are on probation uh, to persons who have been sentenced to probation. Introduction 514A, sponsored by Councilman Roy Lansman, would require the Department of Corrections to provide written notice regarding the voting rights of formerly incarcerated individuals in the state of New York upon release, along with other, along with voter registration forms. And finally, Introduction 1115A, sponsored by Councilman Fernando Cabrera, would require the Voter Assistance Advisory Committee to develop and distribute guidance for agencies covered by agency-based voter registration laws on the voting rights of formerly incarcerated individuals. Such covered agencies would be required when feasible and when requested to, uh, by an applicant currently on parole to check publicly available information to inform that applicant if a restoration of their right to vote has been granted. I want to thank the staff who worked in this package of bills, Rachel Cordero, Brian Crow, Alana Sivan, Brad Reed, uh, Keshorn Denny, and Elizabeth Kronk, and I also want to thank our legislative director, Jeff Baker, for all of his work on all of this legislation that we are passing today. That is it for our agenda for today's stated meeting, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. <clears throat> we will now move into discussion of general orders. 
Seeing none, report of special committees. None. I hope on reports on special committees, we are going to be getting a, a report uh, from a committee from Chair Diaz, I believe. It's not uh, listed here today, but I want to thank him for working on a report related to four hire vehicles and his counsel, and I look forward to reviewing that report and working with him. I apologize for uh, interjecting. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you so much, Reverend Diaz, for your incredible work on this critically important issue to the city of New York. We will now have reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, Intro 514A, Voting Rights. By 14A. Uh, Mr. Yes. Clerk, I, I was uh, remiss earlier when uh, the majority leader uh, asked about messages and papers from the mayor, and you read uh, preconsidered M117, which was the submission of the name of Margaret Garnett to be the commissioner of the Department of Investigations. We had a hearing this morning chaired by a rules committee chair, Chair Kozlowitz, and we had a hearing earlier this week where the council uh, engaged in our advise and consent process related to the DOI commissioner. And it was a hearing that I thought was very important for this body. Uh, chair Torres, the chair of our oversight and investigations committee, uh, played a significant role in asking important questions to this nominee. Uh, it was a long and exhaustive hearing talking about the importance of the Department of Investigations and who would succeed former Commissioner Peters. I was satisfied uh, to buy uh, Margaret Garnett's answers to our written questions, and I was satisfied by how she conducted herself at that hearing, by her temperament, by her professional record, and uh, by uh, how her vision comports with the Department of Investigation. So I did not include that in my remarks uh, from my communication from the speaker today, but we will be voting on this nomination, engaging in the advising consent process. I am proud to support her nomination. Chair Kozlowitz voted for her nomination earlier today in committee, as did Chair Torres, and I think it's important to acknowledge that before we get to the other pieces of legislation in today's package. And with that, we can resume uh, the docket, and I apologize for not mentioning that earlier. Thank you for the additional information, and we will now uh, wait for the results to be read onto the record. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, Intro 514A, Voting Rights. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, LU 264 and Reso 642, Tax Exemption. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management, Intro 744A, 746A, and 1054A, Fire Department Reports and Alarm Plan. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Four Hire Vehicles, Intro 1069A, Medallion Owner Debt. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, intros 367 and 1115A, voter registration. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 218 and Reso 643, landmark designation. Coupled on general orders. LU 232 and Reso 644, Park and Elton Apartments. Coupled on general orders. LU 240 and Reso 645, MEC 125th Street. Coupled on general orders. LU 260 and Reso 646 through LU 263 and Reso 649, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, preconsidered M117 and Reso 650, appoint, approving the appointment of Margaret M. Garnett, Commissioner, New York City Department of Investigation. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, intro 370A and 497A, alternate side parking. Coup amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Youth Services, intro 480A, Homeless Youth Immigration Plan. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Uh, laid over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. That includes the legislation, the nomination of Margaret Garnett, and the land use issues that we talked about today. I ask for a vote on these items. Thank you. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I on all, with the exception of land use 240. Again, my usual rationale, I think the 33% at market rate 
doesn't reflect what we need to do for the population that's homeless and looking for housing. Thank you. Borelli. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I just want to say a quick thanks uh, for the three bills that came out of the fire committee this, uh, this month. Uh, thank the speaker, Jeff Baker, Laura Popa, Rachel Cordero, uh, uh, Josh Kingsley, Will William Hongak, Jin Lee, Yarit Javat, the New York Electrical Contractors Association, the Mechanical Contractors Association, Local 2507, the Uniform EMTs, Paramedics, and Fire Inspectors, and Local 3621, the Uniform EMS Officers Union. And with that, I vote aye on all except 367, uh, 480, 514, 1115. Thank you. Brennan. Aye on all. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, we need to ensure that no eligible voter is disfranchised or their voting rights because of misinformation. A justice involved person only loses the right to vote when a convict, convicted of a felony. Anyone convicted of a misdemeanor or is charged with a felony but still waiting trial still has the right to vote and people on probation can still can also still vote. Intro 115A addresses the matter by requiring that staff of agencies covered by the agency-based voter registration law receive guidance on the voting rights of formerly incarcerated persons to be developed by the Voter Assistance Advisory Committee. Intro 115A also requires these agencies to check if a formerly incarcerated person is eligible to register to vote if requested. We know that civic participation integrates formerly incarcerated people back into the community and re reduces recidivism. Intro 115, 11, uh, 1115A is an important step in ensuring voter rights and civic participation in civic life. Thank you so much, and I vote aye and all. Thank you. Chin. Aye and all. Cohen. Deutsch. I know. Diaz. Permission to split my vote? Permission granted, Reverend Diaz. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, I take this opportunity to thank you, you especially, Mr. Speaker, and Council Member Rafael Salamanca. This is an uh, introduction 370. It's about us Christians. It's about uh, us Hispanic, and that is a, a celebration, a religious celebration that we Hispanic celebrate uh, as a Christian uh, believer, where the visit of the three kings uh, came to Jesus, to baby Jesus, to bring toys. So we celebrate that activity every January 6. I do that in the Bronx, and I we do we distribute 1,000 free toys every year for the children of the Bronx. So today, I'm glad that uh, you allow this to come to the floor because Councilman Sal uh, Sa Salamanca is telling me that for the last two years, he has been trying to introduce this legislation. But before you, Mr. Speaker, there was a Hispanic, there was a, one of us, and did not allow this to come to the floor. So I gotta I got be very grateful to you, Mr. Speaker, and. Councilman Salam for allowing this. That's showing, Mr. Pickett, that you are a person of a great tolerance and that you are for everybody, not only for us Christians, you're also doing it for the Muslim today. So thank you very much and to, 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 to you, Mr. Speaker, and to Councilman Salamanca. And also I would like to take this opportunity, to, this opportunity to thank my councilman, my council, uh, Christopher Lin, for the help that he has given my committee in putting together introduction 1069A. So I, uh, I uh, thank all of you guys, all of you colleagues that will vote yes on this, on today, on all this bill today. And I vote yes on all. Thank you, Reverend Diaz. Much. And you, you look good in Puerto Rico. Oh, thank you, you've got good taste. <laughs> <laughs> Baron. Correction, it's not a no vote on uh, 
LU 240, but an abstention. Thank you. Thank you. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, commend Councilmember Drum for being the prime sponsor of Intro 480 and also uh, the chair of the Youth Services Committee, Councilmember Rose, and the chair of the Immigration Committee, Councilmember Manchaka, and all the co sponsors. As we all know of Intro 480, as we all know, the young people, it is uh, uh, absolutely essential that the young people receive or are provided an environment uh, that enable them to learn, grow, and achieve to the fullest level of their abilities. As a city, we can rightfully claim that we stand strong in our commitment to our youth and the many immigrants from every corner of the globe who proudly claim this city as their home. I strongly believe that Intro 480 is well-conceived legislation that will provide greater resources and protection to immigrant and homeless uh, Wunewe youth. With that, uh, I vote yes and I and all. Jonai. Aye and all. Thank you. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye and all. Kalos. Aye and all. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? Certainly. I echo the comments of our speaker. I was very impressed with Ms. Garnett's testimony. She was asked many, many questions, and she an answered them so professionally and so great. So I vote aye on her, Ms. Garnett, and aye on all others. Thank you. Lanceman. Lander. Aye. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to, I vote aye on all, and I want to um, uh, thank the speaker and uh, my colleague, uh, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca, uh, Chair of the Immigration Committee, and um, Councilmember Mark Levine, Chair of the Health Committee, on, um, on calling attention and getting this council um, uh, on the record against the public charge proposed rule um, that's put forward by the Trump administration that could have absolutely devastating effects. And just to put into some kind of context here, um, this could potentially uh, cost the state of New York 25,000 jobs. Uh, so when we talk about everything around Amazon, um, uh, that would be the impact if this rule went into effect, costing New York State 25,000 jobs because of the loss of benefits uh, to everyday New Yorkers and the, the ripple effect that that would have. And just to, to, to uh, further clarify what this would do, um, this means uh, if this were to go into effect that if you were seeking a green card um, uh, from uh, seeking permanent status in, in, in our country, you would not be able to receive Medicaid, you would not be able to receive Medicare, you would not be able to receive SNAP benefits, all these benefits that people rely on in our country um, just to be able to meet their basic health care needs and food needs. Um, this administration so cruelly, so cruelly, and from a very uh, dark and mean place um, is putting forward this rule to try to uh, force people to decide or choose of whether they want to be here uh, permanently in the United States or, uh, or uh, uh, care for their families and have uh, decent health care. And that is absolutely shameful. Uh, everybody of good conscience in our country should stand up against this and say this is not in our name. We will not stand for this. And we'll fight against it every step of the way. And so I want to thank, uh, again, Carlos Menchaca, our chair of immigration, and the speaker uh, for, for championing um, this, these resolutions. And I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, and I want to pick up where uh, my colleague and co-chair of the public hearing that he mentioned, uh, uh, Councilmember Steve Levin, 
that this is, this is the opportunity that we are taking here today by supporting not just the resolutions, but your own individual comment. Uh, there are more than 83,000 comments already submitted to the Federal Register. We want to get it to 100,000, so please, all of you, we'll be following up to make sure that we get affirmative uh, response from all of you that you're going to be representing the voice. Uh, this is a cruel, a cruel, draconian move by this administration. It is not the first when we think about our immigrants and the people who we represent, the folks who are entitled to the services that this city is providing because we are providing services, services for every single New Yorker, no matter your gender, sexual orientation, or immigration status. I do want to say that this is just an, yet another move by this administration that is whitening America. This is a white supremacist move, uh, and we got to call it out for what it is. Uh, everything that, that has happened between the, the things that have been shut down by the court, this proposed public rule change, and the tear gas and uh, military actions on the border are all connected to this one premise, and we will not stand for that. We are not going to stand for that, and I'm so happy that this, these two resolutions and other things that are coming are going to send a message that's not only strong, but further fortifies our sanctuary city status. So proud to stand with all of you in support of 608 and 609. Thank you so much, and I vote aye on all. Miller. I don't know. I just want to make an announcement that we, in order to maintain quorum, we cannot have any additional members um, asked to be excused. So I just want to make that announcement, and we're going to try to keep this meeting um, on a time basis as, as best as we can. Thank you. Moya. I and all. Powers. P permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just wanted to echo what others had said about the new, uh, the nominee for DOI, Margaret Garnett. I, I was at the hearing. I thought she's a fantastic choice and represents the right, uh, right blend of uh, know-how and independence and I think will be a, a appropriate and, and a strong replacement. Uh, I think that many of us heard her answers and felt very comfortable with the answers she gave in addition to the resume she has. So I applaud both the nomination that came from the mayor and us moving her forward as well. And I also wanted to just say uh, a thank you and a congratulations to my colleagues who have the bills on voting rights today because we had a hearing and I thought that they were important ways to make sure that um, so even city materials are not appropriately allowing people to know what their rights are when you, get, when you uh, are on probation or when you leave the city jail system. I think it's a good way to make sure people know what their rights are and the public understands what their rights are as well. So with that, I vote aye on all. Thanks. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, with congratulations to all my colleagues, <clears throat> especially uh, Councilmember Carlos Majaca and the work that he's doing, uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Richards. Aye on all. Rivera. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. I vote aye. Thank you. Permission granted. Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, um, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, today we'll be voting on intro 367, which will require the Department of Probation to inform people on probation of their voting rights. The issue of mass incarceration in our nation largely affects our black and brown communities, and with the per per pervasive misinformation of who can and can vote, it is up to us to educate and improve voter turnout. Communities of color, like the ones I represent, feel the heavy burden. I believe that creating or instilling a sense of civic duty can begin at a very basic level. Integrating back into a community can begin with feeling like you have a voice, and in this case, casting a vote can be that voice. And we should, we should be encouraging participation in government. We've made great strides in increasing voter turnout, and we should keep up this momentum. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Torres. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to, I am excited by the uh, confirmation of Margaret Garnett. I'm confident that she's going to be every bit as independent as she is qualified. And it's important to note that the nomination of a first class um, nominee did not happen in a vacuum. 
I think it's a testament to the power of checks and balances and the advise and consent role that the city council plays and the speaker's insistence that the DOI commissioner has to be fully independent of both the council and city hall and, and the mayor's office. And so it's a, a real tribute to the leadership of the speaker and I wanna thank the speaker I I just for being as vigilant as he has been in defending the in integrity and independence of DOI. Uh, with that said, I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Valone. Aye on all. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Williams. Permission granted. Thank you so much. Also, please excuse my voice. Um, voting aye on all, with the exception of land use 240 and accompanying Rizzo. Um, and congratulations to all my colleagues. I also want to speak on um, Margaret Garnett for DOI Commissioner attending the hearing. Obviously, there's no question she had an impeccable resume, and I'm, I'm proud to support her. But I do want to talk about the way in which she came to be as one of the sole members of the former committee abstaining on Mark Peters' uh, previous appointment. Uh, my concern um, with him was the close relationship to Bill de Blasio. Thankfully, he did put forward um, reports uh, that were pointing out issues of the administration, uh, but perhaps their relationship made it even uh, diff more difficult for uh, the mayor to accept what was being done. Uh, the McGovern report was very concerning. Uh, the actions that occurred there, we should all be very concerned about, but it's hard to take what the McGovern report said and then not accept the remedies that were put forth. Uh, and Mark Peters did accept those remedies. None of them had to do with firing. I'm not sure if the report at that time obviously mentioned what is coming to light now, which was basically the shelving of reports, uh, highlighting other improprieties, uh, particularly uh, test lying, which is when NYPD testify and not give accurate information, no punishment happens. I hate, hopefully that report will come out soon. All those things together, obviously, are, are concerns, and my hope is moving forward, particularly with the Charter Commission, uh, there's a look at not only this body uh, being a part of approving a DOI commissioner, but also being a part of firing a DOI commissioner. I don't think that is something that should be left up to the mayor, administration, especially if they're being investigated. But with that, uh, congratulations to the new DOI commissioner, and I hope she continues uh, the good work that was being done, and I hope the first report that comes out is that test line report. And with that, I vote aye on all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all. Uh, I echo uh, Mr. Speaker's uh, remarks and my colleagues' remarks about the appointment of Ms. Garnett as the next commissioner of DOI. I think uh, anybody, uh, as Chair Torres uh, indicated, anybody who attended the hearing, uh, and again, as Councilman Williams said, uh, saw somebody who has uh, remarkable intellect, uh, remarkable uh, poise, skill, honor. Frankly, when I first saw the resume, uh, she also had the resume, a dream resume of any first year law student. Uh, an, an incredible accomplished career. And I'm confident and I'm faithful that the, uh, that the mayor in his choice of her, and, and it seems really that this was his first choice, uh, this go around, uh, made the right choice. And I'm proud to vote aye, and I vote aye on all. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Matteo. I'm voting no on 367, 514, 1115, and 480. Uh, with congrats to, to uh, my colleague Joe Borelli on the passage of these three bills out of his committee. I vote aye on the rest. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. We'll now wait for the tally of the vote. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of LU 240 and Resolution 645, we have 40 in the affirmative, zero negative, and two abstentions. 
for intro 367, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative. Okay, we are now going to add Council Member Ulrich um, into the tally vote. Give us one moment. Only I'm, for Council I'm, Member I'm Ulrich. I'm consulting my leader. One second, please. <laughs> If you listen to him, you're voting no on all. I'll vote I on all. Wow. Hurry up and give the tally before he changes his <laughs> mind. All right, I will read it quickly. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, zero negative and zero abstentions. With the exception of LU 240 and Resolution 645, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, zero negative, and two abstentions. And Intro 367, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. For Intro 480A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 514A was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1115-A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions. And that completes the vote tally sheet. We will now move into the introduction and reading of bills. Shh. Quiet in the chamber. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. Okay, we will now move into a discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on any of today's resolutions? Seeing none. We Council Member Inez Barron. Thank you. I just want to uh, say that the resolution is going to be introduced, so you're not talking about the one for, up for introductions? No, we're okay. voting just on the resolutions on the Thank calendar you. today. Okay. Thank you. So we'll begin today with resolution 608, a resolution authorizing the speaker to submit a public comment on behalf of the council to the federal register concerning the proposed change to the public charge rule. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 609, a resolution opposing the newly proposed public charge rule and using the federal government not to move forward with its adoption. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. Madam Majority Leader, I'm very happy to see very few people signed up for general discussion today. And I hope we keep it that way. Thank you. That is a trend that we are moving towards. We will now move into general discussion. We'll begin with Council Member Matthew Eugene. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Majority Leader, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. My colleagues, I would like to take uh, this uh, moment to address several bills that I am introducing at today's stated meeting. As we all know, Alzheimer's disease is a horrible affliction that steadily erodes the cognitive ability of so many of our seniors' uh, population every year. In fact, this pathology is the most common cause of disease among older adults, and it is estimated that more than 5 million, 5 Americans have Alzheimer's, and uh, it is the sixth leading cause of death in the, in the country. In response to these uh, terrible facts about Alzheimer's disease, I have introduced into 1267 a local law that would create a task force 
to provide assistance to people affected by Alzheimer's disease and Resolution 636, which call upon the U.S. Congress to continue annual funding for the research and treatment of Alzheimer's disease while rejecting any future effect to reduce critically needed funding in the area of medicine. Everyone here is also aware of the great threat that the spread of infection disease can present to any population. And of course, here in New York City, we are always at risk for such an outbreak. With that in mind, I have introduced Resolution 637, calling on the United States Department of Health and Human Resources and New York, City's New York State Department of Health to create a special commission and empowered to address health emergency and infection disease. In addition, I have introduced Resolution 638, which calls upon the New York State Department of Health to create a standalone self-contained isolation centers and units that will specifically treat patients with infection disease. And I would like to ask uh, my colleagues to support uh, those Thank legislation. You. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Dr. Matthew Eugene. We'll now have Council Member Cabrera. Reverend Cabrera. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's okay. Uh, E-scooters are coming to town. Uh, introducing a bill today, uh, intro 1250. Uh, it's an important transportation option for New Yorkers. Uh, and I, I want to thank all of you who uh, already communicated with my office, wanted to get on the bill even before uh, its very introduction. And we're talking about uh, e-scooters that will go at a maximum speed of 15, 15, 15 miles per hour, and, I, we will, and will not be in sidewalks. So I'm very excited about this viable option that is gonna be green, it's gonna be affordable uh, for our constituent in my district where over 50% of the people living in my district do not have uh, own a vehicle, a car. Now my young people are gonna be able to get, make it to Bronx Community College, make it to work, uh, go from one uh, train station, perhaps to another uh, bus stop, uh, without having to wait for anybody or, or having a higher expense if they were going to use a cab. Uh, this is a good day. I can't wait. Uh, and looking forward to my colleagues joining in and uh, passing this bill and uh, on the very first day uh, to have my very first uh, e-scooter ride uh, to, to my office. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Council Member Reverend Cabrera. We'll now be followed by Council Members Barron, and then finally with Council Member Traeger. Um, thank you. I just want to briefly remind us that 63 years ago, on December 1st, 1955, Ms. Rosa Parks disobeyed the law and refused to give up her seat to a white woman whom the bus driver had instructed her to give up to her seat to. And it led to another level of the fight in the civil rights movement and brought other notables to the forefront who emerged as leaders at that time. And the result was they were asking for the bus company to not have people have to go to the back after they paid their fare at the front, to go to the back and board through the back. And it escalated, the demands increased, and they finally were able to have people pay at the front, go in the front, and even get positions within the bus company. So it was a very successful venture. And I just wanted to remind people of that. And as a result, the uh, federal court did declare it unconstitutional uh, for that segregation of the buses. And briefly, just to let my colleagues know that I have introduced Reso 332, which calls for the Department of Education to create a diabetes and pre-diabetes health-based curriculum. According to the American Diabetes Association, 30.3 million Americans, or 9.4% of the overall population, has diabetes. And 84 million Americans age 18 and older have pre-diabetes factors. And it's estimated that 40% of elementary school children in New York City are overweight, 
which puts them at risk of developing this chronic disease. So neither the state education department or the city DOE currently has any explicitly, any explicit requirements for instruction in diabetes or prediabetes, and we're hoping, we're hoping to be able to change that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Council Member Traeger. Yes. I do want to thank several people for getting this resolution forward. Uh, Speaker Corey Johnson, Deputy Council Kelly Taylor, Deputy Director Andrea Vasquez, Legislative Policy Analyst Jan Atwell, Chief of Staff Joy Simmons, and my Legislative Director Indigo Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Traeger. Thank you, Majority Leader. Today I'm introducing Intro 1282, which would require the Voter Assistance Advisory Committee uh, which is housed under the Campaign uh, Finance Board, to provide interpreters at poll sites in the designated citywide languages where appropriate. Our city must fight back against voter suppression. We must do everything possible to make voting easier and more accessible. Almost 40% of New Yorkers are born outside of the U.S. It's crucial that our city recognizes this diversity and make sure that all New Yorkers are able to vote. Other cities readily provide language access programs. Why can't the BOE? New York City only provides interpreters in a few languages at poll sites, Korean, Spanish, Chinese, and Bengali. My bill will add interpreters in New York City's other most spoken languages, which currently are Arabic, uh, and I want to recognize my colleague, Councilmember Justin Brennan, who is also very much uh, on this issue of adding Arabic uh, interpreters. Uh, would, we would add Russian-speaking, Haitian Creole, Urdu, French, and Polish. I'm also pleased to have colleagues that have been very supportive <coughs> of this issue. Improving language access has been one of my top priorities during my time on the Council. I'm proud to have proposed and funded a pilot program last year uh, with the help of the Speaker, which helped ensure interpreters were available for Russian and Haitian Creole speakers throughout Brooklyn. Uh, this year, I worked with Speaker Johnson and the Mayor to expand the program uh, at 101 poll sites on Election Day in November. But there's more work to be done. Interpreters were forced to stay 100 feet away in the freezing rain from poll sites. Why? Because the, DO, the BOE had the audacity to state that interpreters were electioneering. Language access is not and should not, never be confused with electioneering. My bill will make sure that interpreters can best assist New Yorkers in the poll sites and so that all New Yorkers will have the language access services they deserve. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Traeger, and I think we were all enthused and excited with so much hope to see the voter turnout that we saw um, so recently but also distraught at the level of difficulty and challenge that so many people faced. As we close today's meeting, I just encourage everyone to know your status and get tested as we kick off World AIDS Day on December 1st. It's so important that we continue this work and we'll now have closing remarks by Speaker Corey Johnson. Happy Thanksgiving, have a good night. This meeting's now adjourned. Thank you. Mm.